So you hear a lot of people say Trump's going through all this lawfare and even he says, if they can do it to me, they can do it to you. But you say they're already doing that. Tell us your story. Yes, Hannah, thank you so much for giving me a chance to tell this story. I think the majority of the American people don't believe that what's happening to Trump could happen to them. But I'm here to say not only is it already happening to regular people, it's been happening to me for almost four years. I'm a homeschool mom here in New Braunfels, Texas, and I'm getting sued by Biden's White House officials for flying Trump flags next to the Biden bus when it drove through Texas in 2020. And there are zero criminal charges. What's so crazy about this is they're suing us for emotional damage and wanting financial compensation for our exercise of free speech. So when this kicked off, where were, where were you politically? Were you a Trump supporter? Were you? <laughs> that is a great question. It's so insane to me to look back in the past because in 2020, I was not sure if I wanted to vote for Biden or for Trump. It's so embarrassing to say that, um, but I was so disconnected from the reality of what was going on, the attack on the family, the attack on our kids. And so at the time, my son was in public school. I was shopping at Target. You know, my friends were saying they wanted to vote for Biden. My dad said he wanted to vote for Trump. And I started thinking, who am I going to vote for? Mm -hmm. And so I mentioned to my friends, I think I'm going to vote for Trump. And they shocked me with my first experience of cancel culture. Uh, they told me that I was entitled, a white supremacist, and I needed to sit there in silence. And I thought, I need some new friends. This is crazy. And so we had noticed the Trump trains, which was essentially a parade of vehicles that would drive around in 2020, getting really excited about the presidential election coming up. You'd see it on boats, out on the water, on Texas roads. We saw it a lot. And we thought that might be a great place to make Make new friends and we had only been participating in the parades for about three weeks when the biden harris campaign bus drove through new braunfels and we thought it would be fun to drive next to them and show our support for president trump we could have never imagined that our lives would forever change obviously that radicalized you guys further to the trump side yeah you know what i think all the time you picked the wrong mom because i when i realized I had a constitutional right to free speech and that they were infringing on it, which I did not know until I got sued. And a neighbor told me, this is free speech, how could they do this? And I thought to myself, what does that mean? And I went and I learned the Constitution. I understood the Bill of Rights. I saw what our founding fathers wanted to guarantee for us because they could predict the future. They had lived in tyranny. They had seen what happens when the wrong people are in charge. And so I'm here thinking, oh, we have to fight. We're Christians, we're full of faith. In our weakness, our strength is made perfect. And we are weak right now because we're under attack. And so God has to be the one to bring the truth and a victory. And so we were all in to fight for what was right. And we cashed out our 401k to retain an attorney because nobody was willing to pro bono offer their services because they advised this was lawfare. The intent would be that the process is the punishment and that we wouldn't be able to afford an attorney uh, because it would last for years. And they have not been wrong. We've been in this for four years and it has been the result of fundraising with the help of average Americans and grassroots efforts, we've even been able to stay in the game this far. So you guys were basically dealing with lawfare from the Biden administration before lawfare was even a common term these days. <laughs> yes, I exactly. I think I learned about lawfare uh, you know, in 2021, when we started asking these First Amendment rights nonprofits for help or our elected officials, and they kept saying, this is lawfare, this is lawfare. I'm like, what does that mean? I know very well now what that means, and I understand it's a tool that the left is using to silence Americans, to intimidate their political opponents, to chill free speech, and to interfere with the elections. And we've seen that from so many different angles. In the impeachment trial with President Trump, they dragged us through saying that he, um, incited us as a precursor to the insurrection at January 6th, right? Mis mislabeling that. And then in the 14th Amendment hearing, the same expert witnesses that they've hired to portray us as political extremists, domestic terrorists, Christian nationalists, are the same people testifying that Trump's not fit to be on the ballot. Uh, in these hearings. And so you can see how they intricately weave this narrative together and we're just collateral damage. What do you think normal people, everyday Americans need to do to fight against this stuff? Because you're a clear example of someone who is dealing with that. You know what, we have a choice. If it crosses our path, are we going to fight? Are we gonna stand up? Are we gonna do what's right? Because it's very overwhelming. As a homeschool mother, a single income family, people without any legal experience or any political experience, to go up against their 20 DC attorneys and their multiple nonprofits funding this, they have mainstream media in their pocket creating a false narrative. We don't even have a voice to advocate for ourselves. But it's the right thing to do. And so we've seen the other defendants because initially there were five listed in the lawsuit and two of the original, or excuse me, uh, 
two defendants. They later added a couple, so in total there were eight defendants. Two have been coerced into settling and apologizing. And I, they tried to force us to settle. They tried to take us into um, the federal court process through the judge to order us to settle. And that tells me they know if we get to a trial by jury, we will be vindicated, the truth will come out and we will win, but they want that win on paper to use in the headlines right before the election. Where is this now for you, the case right now? Mm -hmm. So we have filed not once, not twice, but three times a motion to dismiss this because they're frivolously and egregiously using the Ku Klux Klan law without meeting the basic requirements requirements of this law. This law was put into place to protect people of color who were working to be emancipated from slavery, to work, vote, and go to school. And the Democrat party of the Ku Klux Klan was trying to prevent these people from their freedoms and their civil liberties. And so Republicans put this law into place to protect average Americans from the government and state actors. And now what we see are state actors using it against average Americans and not even needing to meet the basic requirement of proving racial animus or racial motivation. They can just say they're offended. This is a broad and sweeping concept in a society where we're teaching people to be offended about everything. If you can cancel somebody and bankrupt them for disagreeing with them from the administration down to a homeschool mom, nobody in between is safe. So we're headed to trial by jury September 9th after trying to get it dismissed and failing with our Obama appointed judge. We've been assigned a gag order. So there are details of this case we're not able to share that I think the people need to know. So we're fighting the gag order. But I think one interesting component of this whole lawsuit was a piece of discovery that was turned over in litigation that is a video from inside the bus. And that tells the truth. In the big picture. Yeah these cases against Trump, how do you think that's going to affect voters? So just yesterday, Carrie Lake was telling Charlie Kirk about our story just in conversation and she finished the, the thought with the concept, this is why we have to vote. We have to get the right people elected to guarantee our freedoms, that we can continue to maintain them. They are coming after us. And where is the right to stand up and to push back? We are allowing these things to happen and we're not doing our part to protect ourselves or to link shields with one another when somebody is attacked. We've seen time and time again that friends or family are you know, quick to say, we love you, but we don't want them to come after us next. So good luck, but we, please don't call anymore. And that's terrifying that you would isolate and leave somebody alone when the government is attacking them for a guaranteed right. We should be all over that. If Can you imagine, Hannah, if the Trump administration was suing a Biden supporter for flying a rainbow flag? It would be all over <laughs> Yes. Media. I mean, we see that there was somebody who just did a burnout, right, on a flag on the street. Now he's got a felony charge, right? So, but I digress fr from the fairness of it. The reality is that it's a free speech matter. It spans both sides of the aisle. They come for us first, they come for everyone else next. So the left that's cheering this on and championing this attack on free speech because they don't like how we expressed it or who we support, they lack the ability to see how it will soon affect them. You're right, the hypocrisy is absolutely stunning. Yes, so if anybody would like to follow our story, to learn more about um, our legal updates or to support our legal defense, they can go to freespeechdefender.com. And at freespeechdefender.com, there's a 90 second video that can be shared on social media. Um, we recently had a video that went viral with libs of TikTok. Um, we've been on some recent interviews and I'm so glad that y'all gave us a voice because it has been a long four years that we have felt alone in this, silenced in this, and to not have a voice to advocate for ourselves. But after hearing Trump's guilty verdict, people are waking up and seeing that it can happen to regular people and that we represent the average American. And so we need people's support to ensure a win for free speech rights so this does not set a precedent at the federal level to easily come after people next. <laughs>